Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting quick VFX tutorial. Man, I've really got to fix that line. Welcome to another very exciting quick VFX tutorial where I will show you how to create awesome visual effects without boring you for a full 30 minutes. A lot of people have asked me how to create sparks in Adobe After Effects and fortunately that is really easy using the inbuilt particle world effect. I have already created a full tutorial on how to use particle world and, and you can check it out by clicking on this link up here near the sparks. In this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Particle World to create some really cool looking sparks. This is going to be a low intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you are fairly comfortable using Adobe After Effects that you've played around with particles before and maybe even a little bit with expressions but don't worry too much, you'll be fine. Um, I think before something catches on fire, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here we are in Adobe After Effects and as always I am going to start out with an empty composition. I have a very short clip from the intro here and as always if you do want to follow along with this tutorial you will find a link to this video down in the description of the video. Now let's add some sparks into the shot. First let's create a new solid. I'm going to call this one sparks and hit ok. Search for and apply the CC particle world effect to the sparks layer. If you scrub through the composition you can see the default particle world effect right in the center of your composition. I am going to drag the producer up into the top left hand side of the shot and then let's go over into the effect settings and start setting up the sparks. I am going to change the particle type over to faded sphere because this looks a lot closer to what sparks should actually look like and I am going to change the size. I am going to change the birth size to 0.1 and let's change the death size to maybe 0.075. I do want the sparks to slowly get smaller and fade out as they fall. To make the particles fade out a little bit more gently I am going to open up the opacity map. The opacity map is a simple curve that defines at which point during its lifespan the particles are visible. Now the end of this curve is a little bit steep so I do want to go in here and repaint the second half of the curve to slope off a little bit more gently. This will make the sparks fade out a little bit more gently towards the end of their life. If you've ever watched real sparks you'll notice that usually when they appear they're really really bright, they're almost white and so I'm going to change the birth color. I'm still happy with the yellow but I'm going to push it to almost white. I don't want pure white, I want to leave it a little bit off just because it looks a little bit more natural. I'm also going to change the death color a little bit, I'm going to drag it a little bit more into the orange. I think it looks a little bit more natural but obviously it's up to you and how you want your sparks to look. Let's for the moment jack up the birth rate so we can see a few more of the sparks and kind of get a better feel for what they might look like. I think this is actually not too bad. One thing I want to do because I want the sparks to be nice and visible I am going to push up the max opacity to 100%. Finally I think the sparks are living a little bit too long so let's reduce the longevity to maybe 0.6. Let's rewind a little bit and play this back. Hmm, The colors don't quite look right to me. I think I will change the depth color back more towards red. I think it'll just make the sparks look a little bit more natural. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into the physics tab and change the animation from explosive to viscose. Let's rewind our composition and play it back. Cool, that actually looks pretty good to start off. Now let's add some intensity to the sparks. Go and search for the glow effect and then apply it to the sparks layer. Bam! And suddenly our sparks look like they're burning, like they're actually hot. What I am going to do though is I am going to push up the glow threshold a little bit because I think I only want the very bright sparks to glow. I think once they're red I do want them to burn out a little bit. And I am going to push up the glow radius just to diffuse it a little bit more and I'm going to jack up the intensity as well. One important thing before you start tweaking all of these settings is to go into your project panel and make sure that your project is set to use 32 bits per channel. You can alt click onto this button to cycle through so 8 bit, 16 bit or 32 bits. If you do want to use the glow effect I highly recommend change this to 32 bits per channel. Let's go back over into the glow effect and let me push up the intensity just a little bit more. Yeah cool! Can you see how much intensity we're adding to the position where all of the sparks are being emitted? Let's rewind our composition and play it back. Sweet that actually looks pretty good. 
Now, one thing I always like to do when I work with particles, especially fast moving particles, is obviously to enable motion blur in my composition. So let's enable motion blur switch for the composition and for the layer. Let's play this back. Cool, I think I like how that looks. Now, next thing, obviously, I don't want the sparks to constantly be emitting. I kind of want something that's like broken electronics that just emits sparks every now and then. And for that, we are going to use a simple expression. In your effect settings for the CC Particle World effect, hold down Alt on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch icon next to the birth rate. This is going to bring up the expression editor. Now, I am going to assume that you have at least watched my expressions beginner tutorial. If you have not, I am going to link it down in the description. So go check that out first. But let's start controlling how and when the particles are being emitted. In the expression editor type var space random equals random open bracket zero comma one close bracket and semicolon. All this does is generate a random decimal number between 0 and 1 and assign it to a variable called random. In the next line type random greater than 0 0.8 question mark open bracket random minus 0 0.5 close bracket star value colon 0 and a semicolon. This looks hella confusing. All this really does say is if my random value generated between 0 and 1 is greater than 0 0.8, so with 20% probability, set the value of my birth rate to the random value minus 0.5, which will give us a value from 0.3 to 0.5 at the most. Multiply that by the current value that we're setting this birth rate to, otherwise set it to 0. So with 20% probability, we are going to emit some sparks and they are based on how high we set the birth rate ourselves. Otherwise, no sparks will be emitted. So let's click anywhere outside the expression editor to apply it. And let's ourselves set the birth rate to maybe 20. Let's rewind this composition and play it back. Cool, now our particles are being emitted in random bursts, much like what you would expect from a faulty cable. You can easily control the probability of sparks being emitted by changing this number here. So if you jack that up to 0.9, there would only be a 10% chance that sparks would be emitted in the current frame. So if we rewind this and play this back, you will notice that sparks are being emitted a lot less frequently than before. I actually don't mind 0.9, this actually looks quite good. So now the next thing I want to do is I do want these sparks to have a little bit more of a glow all around them, but I don't want to smudge up this current layer of sparks. So now you may think that you can simply duplicate the sparks layer and then blur out this top layer and use it as a general shine. However, because both of these layers use expressions that utilize the random function to generate a random number, these two layers will not be in sync because the random numbers they generate will be different. However, there's a way to get around that. Let me quickly delete this copy of the sparks layer again. You really just want to have one layer in your composition for now and then create a new solid. I am going to call this solid control hit OK and then search for and apply a slider control effect to the control layer. Disable the visibility of the control layer because we don't actually want to see it. Now we are going to use the slider control to control the birth rate of all of the sparks layers in our composition. And the way we are going to do that, reselect your sparks layer and hit U twice on your keyboard to reveal all of the expressions. Now under the birth rate, click into the expression editor and cut this expression out. Go back to the control layer Alt click onto the slider value and then let's paste this expression into here. So now my slider value will be the value that we've calculated via our random function. Obviously the particles now emit a huge amount of particles every single frame, but we are now going to use this slider control value, which is randomly calculated to control the birth rate. Make sure you can see the slider value in your layer window. Let's scroll down into the sparks layer and Alt click onto the stopwatch icon next to the birth rate. Select the pick whip item to select the value of the slider. And you will see absolutely no particles appear at all. And that is because our slider value is actually still set to zero. So even if we are in those lucky 10% due to our expression, our value is going to be zero. So either way, we're not emitting anything. So change the slider value to 20. And now if we play back our composition, you will see the sparks being emitted again. Let's collapse both of our layers and now we can duplicate the sparks layer 
And this second copy will be exactly the same as the first because both of them actually reference this random value here on our control layer. So both of them will use the same birth rate and therefore emit exactly the same amount of particles at any point in time. So now let's rename the top sparks layer to sparks glow and let's search for and apply a fast blur effect. Now let's jack up this blurriness to really turn this layer into a very diffuse glow. Maybe not quite 800, maybe we'll go with maybe five or 400, um, just so you have a you know really nicely blended and blurred out top layer. Uh, I think I'm also going to jack up the glow intensity and the glow radius for my Sparks glow layer, just to add a little bit more intensity to it. Um, again, feel free to tweak this to your liking. Finally, on my Sparks glow layer, I am going to change the blend mode over to add. And now if you rewind and play back the composition, cool. That looks pretty good actually. Now one thing I'm noticing is that the color of the sparks looks a little bit too candy. It's a little bit too saturated to look realistic. So let's select the sparks layer and let's search for and apply a hue and saturation effect. Let's bring down the saturation maybe by about 50%. Yep, that looks about right. And let's copy the hue and saturation effect and paste it onto the sparks glow layer as well. So they're both a little bit more toned down and don't look quite so candy land like. Let's rewind and play this back again. Yeah, I think those sparks look much nicer, just a little bit more toned down, just a little bit more realistic. Finally, just one last tip before I let you get back to your lives. Sometimes you may need your sparks to bounce off walls or tables or other elements in your scene to integrate them nicely. For example, I have a clip here from one of my really early short films where I created fire with my hands. And in this clip you will see that I made the sparks bounce off the table. CC Particle World makes that really, really easy. Let's go back to the tutorial and reselect the sparks layer. Now, if you reselect CC Particle World, you will get the axis box and the ground plane showing up. And under the physics tab, you have a floor tab. And this actually allows you to control how the particles will interact with this floor plane. Let me just jack up the longevity a little bit so they're actually falling past this floor plane. Obviously, we can kind of move this up as well. You can actually change how the particles interact with this plane. For example, right now they're just falling through it, but you can set this up, for example, to bounce. If you are wondering why nothing's happening and this has happened to me a number of times and I'm not even sure whether this is a bug or by design, some particle animations simply do not interact with the floor. So we actually have to change the animation of the particles back to explosive and then you will be able to see them bounce off the floor. The idea behind this is that you can position the floor on a wall or a table or an object that is in your shot. For example, for my firehand short film, I actually placed the floor for the CC particle world effect right where the table is so that the sparks coming from my finger kind of bounce off and land on the table. So have fun with this. Obviously, there's a ton of settings here that you can play with to change how the particles are interacting with your floor. Um, this can really, really help you integrate particles realistically with your shot. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, make sure to go to youtube.com slash surface studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later. Now you've seen this before, but do you know this version? <laughs>